let's now start taking a look at the general reactivity of alcohols. Throughout this discussion and future discussions of the general reactivity of functional groups, I'm going to be making reference to a system of elementary steps that's covered in a video series from Chem 2311. Check that out by clicking this linked box here, or if you're watching on YouTube, check out my Chem 2311 playlist. So let's get into it. So the first thing to note about the reactivity of alcohols is that the hydroxyl oxygen is nucleophilic. It is nucleophilic as a result of its non-bonding lone pairs. One of those lone pairs can be donated to an electrophile or Lewis acid, and we're going to be using the symbol E plus to denote a generic electrophile, even in cases when the electrophile is neutral and loses a pair of electrons in the course of, for example, a substitution. So we can use that hydroxyl oxygen as a nucleophile externally or internally, and we'll look at external examples first. And the first example here is association to a six electron electrophile, or what we call an A sub N, association of a nucleophile step. And in this elementary step, the hydroxyl oxygen coordinates to what we call a six electron electrophile. So a good example of this might be BH3, borane. This is a six electron atom, the central boron atom in borane. And the electron flow for this it's an N to A interaction, non-bonding lone pair to empty atomic orbital, empty 2P atomic orbital in the case of boron orbital interaction. And in the resulting product, the oxygen has increased in charge by one unit and the boron has decreased in charge by one unit. It's gone from neutral to negatively charged. The newly formed bond is here and this coordination of a Lewis acid to the hydroxyl oxygen tends to turn that oxygen into a much better leaving group or nuclear fusion. So this can often be a prelude to cleavage of the carbon-oxygen bond, for example. The hydroxyl lone pair, in theory, can be used as a nucleophile in SN2 substitution reactions, but it generally takes a very strong nuclear fuge in order to do this. So the example I'll show makes use of a triflate. TF here stands for the triflate group, which is trifluoromethyl sulfonic acid, an extremely electron deficient group that is dying to accept a pair of electrons. It really takes something this electrophilic or even more commonly a carbocation in order to make this work. Of course a carbocation would fit into this AN step above. But the result in both cases is essentially the same. We've added an electrophilic group to the hydroxyl oxygen. And here, as in the case above, this results in a positive charge on the hydroxyl oxygen and a tendency for that carbon-oxygen bond to break, leading to further reactivity of this R group as an electrophile. So far, we've looked at examples of the hydroxyl oxygen acting as a nucleophile toward empty atomic orbitals, as well as sigma star antibonding orbitals. The last one that remains is the pi star electron acceptor, and this corresponds to addition across a polarized pi bond, or the ADN, step. A nice example of this occurs in a carbonyl chemistry context, which we'll look at in detail later in the semester, but just to highlight this example, after a carbonyl group, the CO double bond, is protonated, we end up with a structure like this, and this is a strongly polarized pi bond between the carbon and oxygen, and the, the carbon, of course, is the electrophilic atom in this structure, and so the oxygen as a nucleophile adds to the carbon, pair of electrons in the carbon-oxygen double bond heads to oxygen, and in the resulting structure, as we've seen in both of the previous examples, the charge on the hydroxyl oxygen increases. It's now positive. Remember the hydrogen, the hydroxyl hydrogen, is still linked to that oxygen, and on the carbonyl side, all the sigma bonds are still intact. We've just broken the pi bond between carbon and oxygen, and so the resulting structure would look like this. We see elementary steps of this type in the acid-catalyzed formation of hemiacetals and acetals, a bunch of terms that will make much more sense later in the semester. But this is a very common step both in biochemical contexts and in laboratory contexts. The final example, which is sort of a pseudo-alcohol step in that the functional groups involved are not technically alcohols, is beta elimination of a very strong nucleophage. And the reason I say that the groups involved are not technically alcohols alcohols is that usually some heteroatom bearing group is attached to the hydroxyl bearing carbon in addition to the hydroxyl group. And so this could look something like beta elimination of water from a protonated intermediate like this. 
This structure contains a decent nucleophile in the form of a lone pair on one of the oxygens adjacent to a pi bond that's heavily polarized toward the positively charged, formally positively charged anyway, oxygen atom. So we've got a nucleophile positioned adjacent to a good leaving group, and this is the perfect setup for beta elimination. This is an interaction between the non-bonding lone pair on oxygen and the sigma star CO orbital, which results in the formation of a new pi bond. And so contrast this with the example above, where the interaction is intermolecular between two separate molecules. In this case, it's now intramolecular, and that results in the formation of a pi bond. In fact, if you look at this closely, you'll see that this is actually highly analogous to the step above. It's just happening in reverse, and the nucleophile in the reverse direction is water rather than an alcohol. And although this starting structure, again, is not technically an alcohol, I like to include it here because this is important reactivity of the hydroxyl group that we'll see in a number of occasions in future discussions. Before we leave alcohols, of course, the last thing to mention is that alcohols can engage in proton transfer steps, so don't forget about the acidity and basicity of alcohols, which we discussed in a previous video.